This audio presentation is brought to you by Imagination and Faith. Copyright 2024. All rights reserved. Neville Goddard Lecture, A State Called Moses, 04-29-1968. While reading scripture, always bear in mind that it is a story of salvation and not secular history. That the characters from Adam to Jesus are states of consciousness. In Blake's Visions of the Last Judgment, he said, it ought to be understood that the persons Moses and Abraham are not here meant, but states signified by those names as they were revealed to mortal man in a series of divine revelations as they are written in the Bible. Having seen the entire play, Blake added, when you see them from afar, they appear as one man. But as you approach, they appear as multitudes of nations, as the one man becomes the many. The first five books of the Bible are called the Torah, or the law, with Abraham as the symbol of the beginning of civilization. But the outstanding character recorded there is the infinite, eternal state called Moses. The word Moses is the old perfected form of the Egyptian verb to be born. So it is in the state of Moses that something is to be born. Now at the end of the Torah we are told Moses, the servant of the Lord, died and the Lord buried him. But no man knows the place of his burial to this day. Deuteronomy 34. Why? Because Moses is buried in you. Today people try to perpetuate the identity of every prominent person in some mausoleum. In our country, daily trips are made to the graves of our presidents. I am told that there is not a day that Kennedy's grave is not covered with flowers as people cry and pray there. So we know the burial place of our presidents and heroes. But no one knows the burial place of Moses. Representing the future of Israel in germinal form, it is in Moses. A state buried in man, that God's plan of redemption is revealed. Now, an Israelite is not a descendant of Abraham after the flesh, but the elect of God of any nation. Whether you be a Jew, Christian or Mohammedan, Moses. The future of Israel in germinal form is buried in you. And the word Israel means to rule as God. Having seen the entire pattern of God's plan in the mountain, Moses returns and speaks to the people in the first person, present tense, saying, I am the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods besides me. Having said this, Moses reveals God's name as I am. He did not say, I am Moses and the Lord, but I am the Lord. Recognizing his true identity, Moses begins to do wonderful things called signs. Giving Moses the rod of God, the Lord said, put upon it the fiery serpent, and everyone who sees it, whether he be ill or distressed, if he believes, he is healed. All of this beautiful imagery is literally true when God's plan begins to unfold in you. We are told that Moses could not enter the promised land, that Joshua, filled with the spirit of wisdom, entered and the people followed. Joshua is the Hebraic word for Jesus. Moses could not enter because he is God's plan in germinal form. Joshua is its unfoldment, as the word says. I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. And besides me, there is no Savior. The plan unfolds in Joshua in the Old Testament and Jesus in the New. If Joshua is filled with the wisdom of God and Christ is defined as the power and wisdom of God, are they not one and the same being? God's glorious wisdom in germinal form 